Hey everyone, Leah Norval here. I hope you all enjoyed your time working on the Exceptionalities Project and learned a thing or two. I know I learned a lot about fetal alcohol syndrome, and I'm excited to tell you all what I know. So let's get started. Um, pregnancy signifies the start of a life. How that pregnancy is treated, though, will significantly impact the quality that that life has. Fetal alcohol syndrome and fetal alcohol spectrum disorders affect nearly one in every 50 children in the United States. It remains the leading most preventable cause of mental retardation and other developmental disabilities. Defined and named only 42 years ago in 1973, fetal alcohol syndrome is a disorder caused by the passing of alcohol from the mother to a fetus by way of its presence in the bloodstream. This is why I say it's the most preventable disorder. Alcohol consumption during pregnancy is not okay. All that needs to happen so that no child is ever diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome again is for mothers to refrain from drinking during their pregnancy. Simple as that, don't do it. Some of the effects that fetal alcohol syndrome can have on an individual include growth deficiencies, where the child is either small or develops slowly, central nervous system dysfunction, um, resulting in brain disorders, um, and birth defects, specifically facial ones, including a small head or eyes, flattened cheekbones, a thin upper lip, or a smooth philtrum, which is the indent that occurs between the upper lip and the nose. The diagnosis of fetal alcohol syndrome is very closely related to the common effects of the disorder, but does not necessarily have one way to test it. Medical and psychological professionals follow a guideline of signs and symptoms rather than a test to conclude a diagnosis. The diagnostic guidelines include identifying abnormal facial features, growth problems, central nervous system problems, and confirmed alcohol use of the mother during pregnancy. Presence of only the first three list items listed can effectively qualify an individual for diagnosis of fetal alcohol syndrome. Although it's not always possible, early identification greatly benefits an individual with fetal alcohol syndrome because it reduces the amount of exposure they must endure to adverse life events by immediately providing them with the needed environmental and social accommodations. In a school setting, this is ever more prevalent to ensure that the student is receiving the necessary academic adaptations so that they can both succeed and continue to succeed in their learning. That brings me to the question, how does fetal alcohol syndrome present itself in the students of our classrooms? Students who are affected by FAS exhibit restricted and limited learning, behavioral, and social competencies in school. Fetal alcohol syndrome affects students' cognitive functions because it's a form of brain damage. The extent of this will cause some individuals to have mental retardation, while most will have just average or low IQ scores. In a school setting, other cognitive restrictions may manifest in the forms of difficulty planning and organizing, uh, short-term memory difficulties, a poor grasp of abstract concepts, and information processing deficits, such as sensory, sensory processing disorder, in which an individual may have a hard time taking in and sorting all the sensory experiences we have daily. Student performance is also often inconsistent with students who have FAS, including good days and bad days, or not being able to remember something until multiple weeks later. The second area that is greatly hindered by fetal alcohol syndrome is behavior. Students with FAS often display what are considered challenging behaviors. FAS often affects attention span and limits a student's ability to focus in ways that are similar to their peers. This can often be misinterpreted as unwillingness or even laziness to complete school assignments. Impulsivity is another common characteristic found in students who have fetal alcohol syndrome. However, this behavior is often not even understood by the student acting. 
This lack of understanding can lead to a breakdown of communication with both teachers and professionals, although it's not necessarily the student's fault. Adding to these behavior problems, students with fetal alcohol syndrome also have difficulty dealing with transitions and can be hypersensitive to sensory systems. Becoming overwhelmed during transitions or sensory overloads can often result in a student's inability to process what is happening and can cause them to react negatively because of it. The third manifestation of fetal alcohol syndrome in our students affects their social abilities. Considering the cognitive and behavioral complications that are produced due to the disorder, social and interpersonal skills are challenged. Students with FAS have difficulty reading social cues correctly. Facial expressions and gestures and even tone of voice are regularly misinterpreted or missed altogether. This can cause students to have difficulty communicating and being communicated with by their peers. Another social issue is students with fetal alcohol syndrome's ability to judge social appropriateness. Personal space, language choice, and touching physically are sometimes miscalculated or even misunderstood. Students with fetal alcohol syndrome are known to stand to sometimes stand too close use bad words excessively and at inappropriate times, and not understand personal or sexual boundaries when touching others. These things stand to make social interaction awkward and uncomfortable at times. However, students with FAS are also generally very socially driven, conforming to any attention given to them. This may cause them to join the wrong crowd or be unaware of poor decisions being made. As each of us are unique beings, those with FAS are also unique, and how the disorder presents itself in our students will vary greatly. These things talked about are just common characteristics and traits that may help us better understand what fetal alcohol syndrome is. As with all disabilities, understanding fetal alcohol syndrome and making accommodations for the student in school will benefit their ability and success greatly. There's no single right way to go about this, but there are numerous researched and practiced strategies that prove to help not only students with FAS, but in the long run, all of your students. This brings me to the topic of teaching strategies and what you can do for your students. One of the most significant and perhaps necessary initial strategy a teacher can use is to shift certain attitudes about classroom community, academic performance, and student behavior. Creating community in a classroom is an essential part of its success, but may have to be approached differently to create a sense of belonging for individuals with disabilities, such as fetal alcohol syndrome. This may, differ this may include such things as actually teaching routine activities, like lining up, distributing material, or how to take turns. Also, allowing extended time for communication to create peer relationships or encouraging peer teaching or tutoring during independent and student-guided work gives students with fetal alcohol syndrome confidence and a sense of inclusion in the class. Another attitude shift to consider is student performance. For all children with disabilities, efforts may look much different than, that, than those exhibited by their normal functioning peers. Acknowledging this and providing accommodations to learning goals is required, but regarding these changes as meeting valued educational needs is key to creating an inclusive learning environment. A final attitude shift comes with how student behavior is both viewed and translated. Understanding that some misbehaviors can lead to more significant insight to a student's needs will great will allow for greater classroom management and success. For example, behaviors such as fidgeting can show misunderstanding of how to get started on an assignment or that the student simply forgot the instructions. Other things like hitting or physical reactions with another student may in indicate innocently experiencing sensory overload when startled by another student bumping into them, per se. Things like tantrums or emotional outbursts can also allude to a student's heightened stress level due to a coming change in daily routines or nearing transitions. 
In situations like these, the best option may be not to punish the child, but rather increase communication between you and them, or allow for the student to remove and calm themselves from the situation that's arising. Another effective te strategy teachers can use is to modify their teaching style. Some students with fetal alcohol syndrome may receive additional supports, such as special education services, but many will be educated in the general education classroom. Modifications to teaching styles can increase, that increase productivity and success include the instructional approaches that follow. Emphasizing consistency is a key in maintaining regular stress levels and establishing predictable patterns of appropriate behavior. This is important to students with fetal alcohol syndrome in particular because of the difficulty they have with comprehending transitions and new experiences. Some ways to achieve su such consistency is through teaching and having daily routines that do not change throughout a whole year ideally, having visuals that accompany these routines, reinforcing safety routines such as riding the bus or crossing the street, having a queuing system for approaching transitions such as a 10 minute warning bell, and to put in place a transition buddy who might assist a student with fetal alcohol syndrome to a, a classroom change or a new location for a classroom. Managing social skills specifically related to learning is another important teaching approach. This means taking into account the challenging social situations a student with fetal alcohol syndrome may encounter throughout the day and finding ways to curb negative experiences. This may include such things as placing the student at the head of the line to avoid bumping in to others and other physical contact, or providing one-on-one -on -one supervision at lunch or recess, teaching self-control strategies, and reinforcing positive behaviors. Providing learning accommodations is also key to the academic success of a student with fetal alcohol syndrome. These individuals often have poor management and attention skills, but can be greatly benefit, benefited by the teacher, assisting them in ma in with their organizational skills can be done in such ways such as providing an obviously displayed schedule in the classroom, providing multiple textbooks for school and home copies, taping important information such as the alphabet or times table to their desk, or working directly with the student to create homework checklists. These things all help the student with their organizational skills and will lead them to greater success in the classroom. Students also benefit from scheduled and frequent learning breaks. The final teaching style consideration is how you prevent your information to your students. Strategies such as using concrete and literal instruction all the time, um, teaching with varying modalities, greatly using repetition, allowing for extra work time, giving students the option of audio tapes, and modifying assignments so that there's ample workspace or white space on the page can help start the student off on the right foot. Accommodating your teaching style will help st students with FAS up for both academic and social success. A final teaching strategy to consider uh, when working with students affected by fetal alcohol syndrome is to change the physical environment. As already stated, Students with FAS can sometimes have sensory processing issues. Um, so limiting distractors in the classroom is important for their success. This can be done by minimizing posters and visual stimulus on the wall, placing students with FAS in seats located away from auditory stimulus like windows, doors, or heating systems, and away from other students or near the front of the room where sound and visual distractions might be less noticed are good ideas. Seating arrangement is also something important to consider. Placing a student near the teacher's desk so that they, they can get away with less poor behavior is a good idea. And also, um, placing students next to peers who are positive role models um, and demonstrate high levels of patience will positively affect the students with fetal alcohol syndrome. This type of placement may also be helpful when considering the use of 